Leah Handen of Sweden. This is her first game. Both of these playing in the class 10. Well, Anya is only 19 years of age. Her first tournament came in 2017, so she has been playing since 13. But when you compare that to just the brute force of Natalia Partika at 34 years of age, who's current number two in the world, has been playing since 1999. Well, it's a complete titan clash here, but opposite ends of the spectrum with Handen slowly but surely coming into para table tennis and getting better and better by the day she won the 2023 Czech para open gold in the doubles and also got silver in the doubles at the Polish para open in 2023 she is looking to make her first major medal or major title but major title won't be a little bit too far for her at this tournament but she'll be hoping to at least take Partika as far as she can before facing up with Vulture later on on table 10. Well, in case you don't know, this championship has attracted 267 competitors from 35 countries, and many of them will be attempting to secure their participation in the 2024 Paralympic Games in Paris next year. That is what is on offer for these athletes. 22 of them from the single events can qualify for Paris across this six-day event. Well, we're ready to get off on underway on day two. Anya Handen to take her first serve of the championship. She goes down the middle. And it's a good return from Partika. But the first point does go to the pole. One to zero. Partika, like I mentioned, had a fantastic first game yesterday against Volturla. Running in three straight sets. She'll be hoping to do something similar here to Handen in her first game. Potential first game nerves for the Swede. And also when you're playing against a world number one, a world number two, you're playing against the best in the world. It's not just nerves about your first game. You sometimes get a little bit worried and maybe won't play the best of your abilities because you're just in shock or just that aura of the opposition player that you're looking on to. That was a nice return from Handen. She got lucky there on that final return. But Martika did miss the table. So she does get herself a point. It's a nice serve down the line. That's where she's heading for at the moment. She's really done anything else yet with her serves. Partika punches the air there. Yeah, frustration as she continues another point. And once again, Hamden just a little bit naivety there. She hits the netting. It's a nice return, nice rally again, but just too powerful for the Swede who gives a shake of the head. She trails seven points to two. That was a nice return, a nice little rally there. So bring the pace down, but still keep going. And Partika with a power shot. Down across the diagonal. Away from Handen, and she couldn't stop that. 8 2, she leads. And we've got plenty of games coming up for you across the day. We do have a few GB athletes taking part on table six. Which we'll be looking forward to bringing you across. Day two here in Sheffield. As we near the final point of this round with Partika in cruise control. And wrapping it up there to make it 11 2 
in this opening set. And at the end of that first set, I'm delighted to be joined, like I was all day yesterday, by Farrell Anthony, who, of course, is the former three-time GB champion. Good morning, mate. Welcome back. How are we? Um, good, thank you very much. Um, just uh, watching the end of that game, it looks like Partica is starting off where she finished yesterday. Um, she's a very strong player, and um, it looks like... Handen has got maybe I don't know if she's new, um, but um, when you're playing somebody as good as Partica, who is a multiple Olympic, world, and European champion, it's got to be quite a daunting task. So you have to get your head right. Absolutely, we saw that happen yesterday with Volchora of Romania against Partica. Seemingly, Handen's going down that same route, but let's see in the second set if she can do anything different with Partica starting from the serve. Those returns are just so quick and vicious. Yeah, she's always looking to get in Partica. She's she's very aggressive, so um What's better well, that's a fantastic Hunter. return. She re-looped that loop um and both left hander, but she put a bit more curve on it as well, so it just went away from Partica as well. Much better. Hopefully she can try and get some confidence from that. She did gain some good fortune there. And she does lead by two points to one. And on the follow up into the net, it goes. So we're back all square once again. Some nice returns from Handen. She couldn't quite get the accuracy on the final one, but she's trying to bring the pace down of the pole. Trying to play it at her pace, not Partica's. All right, she's just gone for the same sort of shot she did earlier. We just clipped the net. But she doesn't look, she doesn't look overwhelmed by Partica. She just, I think she's getting a groove on, but she's um, obviously just um, just making a few errors, that's all. It's bound to happen for her. This is her first game. On day one, she didn't actually compete. This is only a group of three, along with the Romanian Volchula. So this is Hunden's first experience of this European Championships. We'll have another game later on today at 12.30 on table 10. Which will be a little bit better understanding for her of how she'll do in this tournament. Bartke just went for a uh, serve down the line then, which is always more difficult, but she um, wanted to try and just mix it up a bit. Oh, well, that's very unlucky from Handen as she went for the return, just hit yeah. the edge of the table. On her side. She's not shy at actually trying to get that ball, you know, re-loop a uh, strong loop. That's a nice rally from the two of them. It's right. unfortunate from Handen in the end, but yeah. that's the kind of level that she can compete at. Yeah, and like I was saying to you yesterday, um, it's all about consistency. Um, at this level, you can if you can only do it for a couple of shots, it's it's not any good. You, you you know you've got to do it for two or three games really. Into the net again. Yeah. So she just snatched that. Then yeah. she just went very. She didn't prepare herself properly, and she just snatched at the ball. Well, she trails nine points to three. It's going very swimmingly at the moment for the former world champion in Partica. You see the smoothness of Partica's shot then. Um, sometimes that's the difference. 
Like that. So it's just, just on the forehand, just on the backhand. Nice tight serves and just and make sure she gets in strong. She doesn't try and um, blast the ball. What she does is she um, serves and makes sure she gets that first ball on the table with a lot of spin so she can follow up. And generally, if you put in a lot of rotation on the ball, it makes it so much he um, harder for your opponent to get back. Well, it's 11-2 and 11-3 in the first opening sets for Partika against Handham. And this is as we expected. Coming up after this on this table, we have Norway versus Great Britain. We have Jenny Sleetham against someone that I do believe you know. I hope you do because I've said it now. In Bly Tony. But it's uh, the 13-year-old Brit. That's it. Yeah. Bly will be taking part on this table. And we're really excited to see how she does in her first European Championships, of course, in Great Britain. Yeah, of course she won yesterday, so she's got a great start. So she'll be feeling confident and settled. I think, obviously, as a young player coming in, it's sometimes really difficult. But hopefully she'll... Um, Carry on. Back underway now. That's a better start yeah. from hand into this set. She doesn't quite win the point, but she's going for that attacking. She has to do now. Again, she's just snatching that forehand. It's a good shot, but she just needs to just relax a bit, I think, sometimes. And just make sure she gets the ball on the table first. Great serve from Partica there. Brilliant return there yeah. from Partica once again. That's so much better. She went down the line then. She went straight down into Partica's backhand. Which was which was a lot better, but it was a lot smoother the shot. And then to serve, and got that point back. Well, but there's that power again from Partika. She can just turn it on, can't she? And that's that's what great players and great champions can do. Just turn it on when it's necessary. Nice. And that will, that will come with age with Hamden. She's only 19. She's yeah. got a long time left on the European and world circuits. Yeah. That's better from Hamden there. Forcing Partica to rush a shot. Seven two, the score. Partica leads by two sets to zero, and it's and there she just switched it up. She went down the line that time. Normally she's gone cross court with that shot, but she went down the line on that occasion, just full in hand. And and again, her serves are so strong and spinny. It's very difficult um, if you can't return serve very well to actually trouble somebody like Partick because she's got a range of serves that are so difficult to return. We're on to that match point now for Partick. She didn't quite get it there, but she wants to try and do it in style. And do it the best she can. 10-3 the score. And in to serve. Partick is just... Trying to do a little bit too much here. She knows it's in her control. Again, Hamden getting a nice point back on the ball there. 10 5. This is looking better. Pole to serve. And there we go. It's frustrating from Hand, and she wouldn't want to end the game like that. It was a 
Simple enough serve from Partica, but she couldn't quite get over it in time to return it onto the table. But an improvement in that final set. And for Hamden going forward, she knew this game was going to be the toughest. But she's got a game later on Absolutely. to really focus on. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, when you're playing somebody like Partica, it's always going to be difficult. And she looked very comfortable in, in what she was doing. She, she just smiling at her coach and everything. So uh, I don't think she's, you know, she'll be looking forward to the next round now. Oh, we do have quite a sizable wait already this morning now for the next game. 30 minutes until we're back in action on table six. So we do hope to see you then.
Strait. The umpire is Jenny Sanders from England. On table six, Jenny Sletnam from Norway and Bly Toomey from Great Britain. The umpire is Boris Racco from Slovakia. On table seven, Billy Pine from well, welcome back to day two of the 2023 World. Well, it's not the World Championships, the European Championships. <laughs> not the Worlds, we're in Sheffield. Uh, and I'm delighted to be joined, as you probably heard, uh, a little laugh there from Farrell Anthony. How are we? I'm um, good, sir. I'm looking forward to this match very much. Um, we've got a new player. She's, she's new, she's exciting. She's called Bly Toomey. Uh, she's 13. She's um, left-handed as well, which is obviously, I'm a left-hander as well, so um, the left-hander fraternity is strong in the GB squad. Oh, we do indeed have uh, the youngest Brit here. She doesn't have a world ranking yet, but neither does her counterpart of Norway, Jenny Sleetham, 18 years of age. So these are two real newbies to the circuit, aren't they? Yeah, and I think that's important that we get, um, you know, new... Uh, young players playing because it keeps the sport alive and it means that the sport is healthy and um, hopefully um, you know they'll put on a good show they'll be a, probably a bit nervous at the beginning but once they start to play the table tennis I'm sure um, they'll forget the crowd and just sort of focus on what they've got to do on the table. Uh, looking at their results yesterday Seaton fell to a 3-0 defeat against uh, Korkut of Turkey but Toomey, on her debut at the European Championships, won her match against Sand of Sweden. So that's absolutely fantastic. It's a, to to win any match is in, you know difficult, but to win your first European on your first European debut, it's um, fantastic. Yeah, she mentioned in the build-up to this that I know she's been playing for two years, but she was just really excited to have her club Brighton come up for this and join her for the tournament. And she said beforehand that she was just hoping to win one game at this entire tournament. One game so that she could get a world ranking, but she doesn't want to set targets. Well, she's already got that victory, and there we go. So with another two games to play, she's got so much more potential to fulfil. And very interesting enough, her coach, Will Bailey, how much of an impact is that for her to have him alongside? Well, it's a fantastic impact. He, He's, you know world number one he's he's been in the sport a few years he's very passionate about the sport and so he's blind that rubs off as well so she you know she doesn't complain much about when she's practicing and when she trains hard because she sees will train hard and she wants to be she wants to be a champion and she's got the perfect role model in will bailey absolutely will bailey former paralympic world champion and, well, He's the current world champion. Sorry, current world champion even. Yeah. Let's put some respect on his name, apologies. But yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, you know, well, let's have a quick discussion about him while, uh, while the two players are warming up at the moment. He's definitely setting his sights on gold this year, isn't he? He is, and, you know, but for him, you know, it's important that he puts something back into the sport and help him blaze exactly that. Do you know what I mean? He, you know, I mean, Will's got a few more years yet, but... Um, the fact that somebody like Bly can, he can take somebody like Bly under his wing and help her, you know, in sort of, you know, she's got a lot of time in the sport left. She's only 13. So you can imagine in the next, over the next few years, she's, she's only going to get better. Absolutely. And the warm-ups are just yeah. happening and taking place at the moment between these two players, once again, of Norway and of GB. The average age of these two, I believe, 15 years old and you've got yeah. to just give them absolute credit for being where they are absolutely and for Jenny Slater I mean she's you know she's she's only she's only um 18 is it yes she's 18 so she's young as well and um you know for, for both of them it'll be exciting um exciting prospect for the next few years as they develop because you know these two players are going to be around for a long time absolutely both their first tournaments were Actually, this year, the Costa Brava Spanish Para Open, both of them took part in that. And now they are taking part in the European Championships alongside each other as Blight gets us underway. Well, no pre-game nerves from either of them. Going straight into 
a little rally at the start. And it is the Brit that comes out on top of that first point. That's a great serve from Blige, but um, backspin or what people sometimes call underspin on the ball, and it went straight into the bottom of the net. Sleeton now to serve, and that was a good serve from Sleeton to myself. Just got on top of the ball there. So back level to two all. I saw having some discussion about the serve. I don't know what the obviously we can't see what they're saying. in deep conversation about it. Um, he's talking about the ball going up, I think. I don't know if it went up the, the required 15 centimetres. I'm not quite sure. That's a nice response and a oh, fantastic shot. Oh, that's a fantastic shot. shot. Brilliant from Bly. Yeah, she moved brilliant. She moved round to her forehand and played the winner down the line. That was a wicked shot from the Brit and that will give her the world of confidence won't it yeah it will do again she's looked she's creating an opening so she's not panicking when she's playing the rally she's looking for to play a finishing shot but she's not rushing it she's just waiting for the opening and then going in for the kill which is really good so she's already got sort of traits of Will Bailey and her, just like to hold the ball and then play a winner. Yeah, it's real maturity for such a young player as well. And she's absolutely loving life out there at the moment. Yeah. And she's looking for the opportunity as well to, to play a strong shot, to get that forehand in, which is her strongest shot. What work to do for the Norwegian. Just get a point back there. Five three. Back to Blair to serve. No, well, unless she's just gone for the backhand, but she's missed it. But that's that's a positive sign because she wants to play positively. And sometimes you are going to miss the ball. It was the right. It was the right sort of shot. It just she just didn't execute it. A little bit too Here much on that shot yeah. once again. And it's allowed Sleetham to now get back level to 5 all. A good game on the cards here. It's a brilliant rally between the and two of them there. Brilliant. So she, what she did there was she played the two shots down the line. One down to a forehand and then one down to a backhand. So she's using the table well as well. She's back in that two-point advantage now. 7-5. Well, uses time to take the towel break. Uh, we spoke at the start, didn't she, about both of these players maybe just having some pretty much nerves and being a bit slow to start, but absolutely not. They're both really going That's for it. That's a brilliant it. backhand from Bly. There we go again. And she just gave herself some encouragement as well. So she missed the first one, but she got that one. And so she's, up, you know, she's obviously confident about what she's doing, which is really good. And that's a great serve. Already she's got a brilliant variety of serves that can, can just unstable your opponent. Your opponent doesn't know what's coming next, which is also very good. Oh, it's fantastic she again. Just, she's absolutely lovely. That's the third time in this game. She's yeah. done that same shot. That's wonderful stuff. She 
pulls the opponent in with those little calm shots and she just absolutely rams it past and oh, this has been a fantastic first set performance from Bly brilliant first 11 set 5 first set to her um, she'll take a lot of confidence from that um, and you know going into the second game um, and for Sleetum it's just going to be a case of that's the first game out of the way um, she may have been suffering from a bit of nerves initially but um, she played some good stuff but I think Bly sort of definitely deserved to win the game and she played the thing is Bly made a lot of winners that's the difference it, were, it wasn't that Sleeton was making a lot of mistakes. It was that Bly was playing winners. And that's also very important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well they come for That's uh, second set now. And the Norwegian with all the work to do. to get us off and underway with the serve. Apologies now, that was a bit of the Norwegian. And power shot right down the middle, actually. I'm hit by surprise, <laughs> to be honest. She's a bit startled as uh, <laughs> yeah, that came yeah, right I mean, down the centre. Obviously it hit her, but she didn't mean, she just went to win the point, that's yeah, all. Of course. Again, Bly just making sure, you know, she's getting in with her. What she's doing really well is she's making sure she gets her first attack on the table. This is a good rally from the two of them. And That's brilliant. Sleetum just comes up short. It's good play from both of them. Enjoyable play as well. Uh, she's just putting a bit of pressure on the um, Norwegian to to come back with a counter. It's a nice serve from Sleeton, but well returned from Bly, and that's a fantastic response there. And both of them really, both of them really going gun ho here. It's just going to be stopped here for Kudrapal coming onto this side. We'll be back off and underway. 3 2 the score to buy. At least I'm going to take a bit of confidence from that. She put a bit of pressure on by it and she made the unforced error, so that's good. Three points apiece during the second set. Well, I'll be pleased with that. She's going to sell back in front following that towel break. She just takes a little walk around the court as well to give herself um, any time to um, settle herself and just to encourage herself to do better as well. Again, that's a great serve from Bly. She's got a very good range of different serves, different side spins and back spins. Um, it's really good. Back underway again now. This is a fantastic rally again. It, every and time they go into these rallies, it's Sleetum that's... Not quite getting it yeah. back over the net. And and by then, what she did was she played down the backhand and then she played another shot down the backhand and Sleeton was expecting it down the forehand. So she's really unsettling the Norwegian player because she doesn't know where the ball's going to go. Real unpredictability yeah. about Bly's play. That gap has all of a sudden opened up to an 8-3 difference. Two me to go again. The serve. She wins the point. She's delighted with that one. 
Yeah, she's feeling confident. She's got she's obviously got confidence in both on both the wings now. I think in the first game she was a bit more forehandy. But now she's doing with both hands. She's got with the backhand and the forehand. So it's making it so much more difficult for uh, Sleeton to read where she's putting the ball. I don't know what happened there. They'll replay the point. I don't know what. I don't know what the referee. Service so retaken. And to me again with such a quick response. Yeah. It's just a starting point. She's just going for those careful, delicate shots over. Unfortunately, forced into that error there. And I mean, that's the first the time she's actually played. She's been she's been forced away from the yeah. table, which may give Sleetham a bit of co um, confidence for the next game. Oh, well, that is the second set done, and it is to be in control. Work to do for Sleetham for in that 11-4 defeat in that second game. Yeah, even the coach is looking really relaxed. He, um, you know, a little smile on his face. So, um, just giving her encouragement to carry on and doing the same thing. 11-5 well, and 11-4 in games one and two. Yeah. Should be hoping for much of the same in game three. See Tim with a bit of work to do. Deep in conversation with her coach, just on the far side of the picture. Yeah. And he'll be giving her sort of instructions in terms of how to, you know, counteract what Bly's doing. But she has to be, to, to get back into this game, she has to be a bit more positive, I think. Because at the moment, I think she's just, she's expecting Bly to miss the balls, but she, Bly's not missing. I'm glad to get us back underway. She goes across the table with the serve. Like that. So she started well, Sleetham. It was a good good combination of shots. But she to, to get back in this game, she's gonna to have to put better on um to me to actually win win the win the game. That's a great serve. Side spin and top spin on that ball. A lot of side spin and a lot of top spin. And how difficult is that to do? Um, it's a it's a good serve, but you know she'll be practicing the serve just like she'll be practicing her shots. She'll be she'll be definitely practicing that kind of serve on a regular basis. Fantastic returns there from the both of them, and by just yeah. coming up a bit short there. But that was a really good return, wasn't it, from Jenny? Yeah. She's putting a bit more pressure on yeah. on by now. She's got no choice. She has to win this set. That's better and from there you go. So in the previous, she's gone down the line and cross court, but then she went down the line again. So again, she's just up. She's just upsetting the balance of what Sleetham can actually do. A great follow-up there with the backhand. Really strong punch into the backhand of uh, Jenny Sleetham. Well, she's taking a towel break. 4-2 the score. Sleetham with the serve. And just a little bit too much on that for Blight. Yeah, I think the first time I've seen a snatcher ball this, this game. Five, three, to the Brit. She's in control overall and in control in this third match. Well, she tried, I can see what she tried to do then. She tried to go down the line with the backhand, just missed it. And again, she's done that top spin, side spin serve, which Sleetham seems to be struggling with. She'll have a bit of respite from these serves as it's her turn to do so. 
Again, that was the second time now she snatched it, isn't it? Yeah. In this um, uh, in this game. But I think she that to be to give Slayton's credit, she's putting more pressure on the ball. She's not just putting it on the table. She's trying to force blind to mistakes. That was a fantastic reply. Yeah, and a great from block. From Sleetum. Yeah, great block by Sleetum. And we're at six all now. So she's she's giving it a good go in this game. And it's better, more positive stuff from the Norwegian. And she does lose out on the point there. Yeah. Good response from Bly Toomey there. See there again, Sleetum just putting more pressure on the ball. She's she actually punched through that ball with a lot more force, just making it more difficult. That's rally going on here. What oh, a shot a from Bly shot. across the table. Yeah, and at a distance, she really had to leap across for that. What yeah. a fantastic effort. Yeah, she got across really well. And again, yeah. really good stuff. Down the middle this time. I think that yeah. could, must have caught Sleetum off guard. Yeah, she's calling a timeout now. And that's a sensible I mean, the thing, thing to do. The yeah. thing about that was that when um, Sleeton played that forehand, there wasn't a lot of pace on the ball. It went mid-table and Bly was onto it like a shot with a forehand. Oh, it's certainly been a tantalising third set, this. Yeah. 9-7 the score. She's put a lot more pressure on Bly this time. I mean, Bly's still in front and that's good, but... I think for Sleetum, she, she can take confidence that, you know, she can she can actually win points as well and force force the errors from a, from her opponent. Well, they're back out then. Two points needed for Toomey. Work to do for Sleetum. There's two to serve. And three again, I think she's referencing that height. So I don't know what's going on. Oh, there. the score's actually been given to Sleeton there, so the score is 9-8. Well, she probably, she's, she's obviously not thrown the ball out properly. Uh, oh, and it's just unsettled her now. Yeah. So she went far too big on that shot. I think she's uh, called the timeout. I think that's good. Yeah, she. I think say, he's just, gotten, gotten yeah, settled with that point being absolutely, taken off. Absolutely, but the coach has done the right thing because yeah. she, that shot she would normally get, but she's just been a bit unsettled by the fact that the referees called her for a service. So, with well, the score nine all now, how does this sort of change what the coach has been saying? Of course, they've just had a timeout only 30 seconds ago mm. with the two points in front, but now, that yeah. level, what's being said? Yeah, so he's just telling her about the serve and how sometimes it's not going, it's either not going up too much or it's going back. So, so she's got to throw the ball up as vertically as possible, but she's got to throw it up the required 15 centimetres. Oh, the timeout ended a little bit early there. That's Bly's choosing. But the, the coach did the right thing there because she needs to settle her down rather than sort of, you know, she doesn't want to be upset. She needs to just, you know, take a, take a minute and settle down again. Sleet him to serve. Got his back. This is a nice rally here from the two of them. Really good stuff. And a oh, really good brilliant. finish from Toomey. Rose. And she's delighted yeah. by that. Yeah, she takes a bit of a run round the court and giving herself encouragement. She's definitely got that from Will Bailey. <laughs> He'll love hearing in that. And there and we that's go, it. that's the game done, that's the and game. that's well the power done. of the timeout. She was unsettled, coach caught the timeout, she came back, won two points tremendously well, and wins the game, three sets to zero. Brilliant Fantastically done from the Brit. Brilliant performance from her. And that's um, two out of two now, so she's won, I mean, to set a target of winning one game, she's already 
um, increased that by 100%. So, um, you know, it's good. And she can go in with the next game more relaxed as well. Absolutely. Well, she'll be back on later this evening for her final group game. That will be taking place at half past seven. And that will be I mean, the final game of day two. But still plenty of action to come your way between now and then. In 20 minutes' time, we'll have a Class 11 game. The first Class 11 game we would have had on this table between Peter Palos of Hungary and Antoine Zhao of France.
Well, welcome back to the European Championships here in Sheffield for the Parrot Table Tennis. We had a fantastic game last time out between Jenny Sleetham and Bly Toomey. That ended by three points to zero. Now we have our first Class 11s of the week here on Table 6. Peter Palosh of Hungary taking on Antoine Zhao of France. Peter Palosh, 38 years of age. He's currently ranked number two, was previously number one in the world. Taking on Antoine Zhao, he's currently ranked number 18, a 30-year-old. Um, was ranked previously highest of number 10. So a bit of a difference between these two in terms of their careers so far. No major titles for Antoine Zhao in the singles. Whereas you compare that to Peter Palosh, he won the 2021 Paralympic Games in the singles in Class 11 back in Tokyo. So he's definitely got the advantage here in terms of what to expect from these players. He's a powerful player, is Peter Palosh, and will try and force Antoine Jaron to as many mistakes as possible. Well, we have got another game after this in the Class 11s in Group 1. And we'll have a blue Asia of Turkey taking on Kristina Melia Lysiak of Poland. Well, the players are just getting themselves warmed up and ready to play. And once again, I'm delighted to be joined by Farrell Anthony for this one. We've just been discussing a little bit off air that you're not too familiar with either of these players. But just from their stance, you're quite good at sort of telling their kind of play styles. What can you tell us? Um, well, I think they'll both be attacking players. They're very, there are very few defenders um, at the top of the game because the, 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 the speed of the ball is that quick now. And as you can see by the way they're knocking up, they're not going to be... Um, they're going to, not going to be defending at all. So we're probably going to get um, a lot of um, sort of topspin to topspin rallies, countering, both backhand and forehand. Both players look as though they... Do, well, I'm not seeing what they're playing with the backhand at the moment. I don't know what they're... They don't look as though they've got um, um, pimpled rubber on the backhand at all. So um, we'll have to see. And as you can see, Peter Palosh is just... Um, Warming up with a very strong forehand. <laughs> Talk to us then about those pimples. Uh, yesterday we were going through that you can either have the medium ones, the long ones, or short. So what will be the difference here if they haven't got any on the back? Um, it just means that the the, ball, the rotation of the ball is a lot quicker and the spin on the ball is a lot faster. With the pimples you can slow it down. You, you'll get a bit of spin but not as much. And that's what um, that's what some players use to upset their opponents because the ball doesn't come through as 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 smart and smooth um but it, by the looks of this it, they both look as though they're both play with their smooth rubber on the both both sides well peter palosh has already played one game in this tournament yesterday winning by three to zero Antoine Jao, this is his first game of this european championships so i always discuss there might be some of those pre-game nerves for them, but he is an experienced player, uh, 30 years of age. His first tournament was in 2015, so he has been playing for eight years now, has the Frenchman. Mm. But the Hungarian, by contrast, has been playing, I believe, since 2011. And like I say, he has had a lot of success in terms of major titles. He actually won these European Championships in 2011 and 2017. And I think he'll be definitely aiming to retake that yeah. gold this year. Yeah. I've just noticed that Palos has got two different shoes on, different coloured shoes, which is uh, some of the players are doing that now. They're wearing two different shoes. Does that grant a competitive advantage or is it no, just, is just, it just a, a fashion choice? A fashion thing, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, just a fashion thing. Well, the two different shoes. Palos gets us underway. Yeah, great backhand, backhand open up then. Absolutely, you were right about the pace of this yeah. game. Right at the top, no time for defence. It's just attack and speed that the ball is going up. It was a great fit from Zhao there to set himself up with that winner. It's 
So two on two, the Hungarian, as it stands. Yeah, he just clipped the net there to win the point and just apologised as well. And again, uh, it's the second let of this game already for the Frenchman. He'll go again from the serve. Yeah, the, the, sometimes when they're serving, they try and keep the ball as low over the net as possible because they don't want to give an advantage to their opponent. Great serve for Palas there. Just putting a bit of backspin on the ball. It's been a difficult start for the Frenchman here. Trails by four points to one. But that's a fantastic but, return yeah. though, that. That is much better from him. Yeah, he moved round to his forehand and played it on the plate, move round to his forehand on the backhand side to play that winner. Another let there from Antoine Zhao. Third time in this game. Point goes away from Palos there. Again, the net is getting a lot of action in this game. Yeah. Is there any reason particularly for that in terms of the way they're, they're hitting the ball? Is that causing that? No, they're both just trying to keep the ball as low as possible over the net. And, you know, you, you don't want to give you um, an advantage to your opponent. But that was a brilliant shot from Palos down the line. A real heavy punch. And a great return from Antoine Zhao then. Right into the backhand, right to the backhand of the table. 6-4 the score in this opening set. Yeah, I mean, what people don't appreciate on, on, on screen is the amount of spin that's been imparted on the ball. It's very difficult to see how much spin is on the ball uh, because the ball is small and the court, you know, it's, but the subtlety and the difference in spin is noticeable um, when, when you're up here and you can see how the ball curves in the air. A little bit unfortunate there. Clipped off the net. Can't make contact with the table. Palos back into that three-point advantage. It's a nice return though yeah, there and Xiao. Yeah. He right flicked it so. really strong then and then followed up with a with a winner. And he's holding his own here. Here's the Frenchman. And he's got his serves to come. Again, what did he, he he actually served with his backhand, opened up with his forehand, then played a forehand winner. Just mixing it up to, so that Palos doesn't really understand, you know, to try and unsettle Palos. Up he goes again from that serve. Loses that this time as he tries to return it. But promising signs here from, from the both of them, to be fair. No first game, no nerves from the Frenchman. And looking just to unsettle. He is Hungarian opponent, but he does trail now by 10 points to 7. And this is set point. There we go. Eh? Muted applause right. from the coaches there, but the end of set 1, it is the Hungarian who leads and will be the happier of the two camps. But definitely promising signs there from the lower ranked, Zhao. Yeah, I don't think it's um, it's the first game, and I think it could be a tight game. This I don't think it's all going. I don't think Palos is going to have it all his own way. And what I have noticed with Palos is, like a lot of Hungarians, um, even in the able-bodied game, they're very they have very strong backhands, and that's from the 1970s when um, the Hungarians were brilliant um, in in able-bodied, and they 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 sort of perfected this backhand technique, very strong backhands. All the Hungarians had strong backhands. And you can see that Palos has had, a, it's a, it must be a tradition over there to make sure you have a strong backhand. Well, is it sort of, I don't know, 
Is it too difficult to learn for for other cultures and no, for, no, for no, other no, countries? No, it's just because, the like way you're saying, it's their is it that by like their specific trait that they've just perfected over the years? Um, yeah, it's just something that they they believe in having strong backhands and forehands, and he's. From what I've seen so far, he has got a very strong backhand. And we played um, the girl that played yesterday from Hungary that we saw on this table. I can't remember her name now. She she had a strong backhand as well. Um, oh, I want to make sure I actually say her name correctly because she uh, <laughs> yeah. corrected us early. It's uh, Alexa Svitoc. Yeah, that's right. She had a very strong backhand as well. Joe gets us underway. It's a good serve, that. Really low to the table. Puts himself in a nice early lead. And again, that backhand. Backhand open up, backhand winner. Very accomplished on his backhand. Very accomplished. Just a bit of frustration there that he missed that ball. Well, to all the score. Zhao back on the serves. That was a really nice return yeah. from... So he came into the middle of the Carlos. table there and sort of played a banana backhand. That's a great return, really deep into the corner. And Zhao was tucked up in and he couldn't get the ball back on the table. And a good backhand flick there, right into the corner of Palos. It's easy. And you can see Palos is practicing just what he should be doing. Five three the score. Midway through second set now. And he got got fortunate yeah. there and he recognises that. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Just put it back in the air to say um Time just out to been by Antoine Zhao. Trails by six points to three. Do you feel yeah. like this is the right time to do that? Yes, I think so, because he doesn't want him to get too far away from um you know, he doesn't want the game to sort of just run away from him. So he's probably just giving me a bit of advice now about how to stop Palos getting in with... I mean, if I was coaching, I'd sort of... I'd be saying, you know, you need to make sure the ball's not too long with no spin or to try and touch it short so that Palos has to come in. Because at the moment, he's just... You know, he's, um, he's able to get in with his backhand at will and he's causing him a few problems. That's all. So deep in conversation, the Frenchman Antoine Jaure and his coach. Peter Paloche with his coach just on the opposite side, but they look a lot calmer yeah. in their demeanour, and understandably so. I think, for me, Zhao, and, you know, they're, they're both serving into their diagonal, and I think, you know, to mix it up a bit, maybe he should serve into the middle or down the line. Because at the moment, Palos is really ready. For, he's waiting for his backhand to get in. He's making Zhao's making it a lot easier for him to do that. Well, it's Zhao to serve then. <laughs> Not what he come up with. He's gone to the forehand. Brilliant. There we go. Too quick for yeah. Shao to even respond to there. Yeah, it's just the ball just popped up. He just misread the spin then. Made it easy for Zhao. I mean, for Palios. And again, just unable to return that. It'll go from the serve, though, and that's that a bit a, better. That's a better serve. And you can see Palios, you just say he, he's actually... Um, shadowing what he should be doing. Mm. 
Set point for Palos. And then this one, it just goes over and then he'll go for a speed return, but it clips off the net. Yeah, it was a better return from him, though. He played it into, into the middle of the table rather than to his backhand, which seems to be his strongest shot. There you go. That was much better. Mm. And although he lost the point, it was the right tactic because he's, he's, he's actually just... Palos is he's really strong on his backhand. And now he's trying to say, well, OK, how strong is your forehand? And that's why he's changed his serve and changed the way, the direction. So maybe in the third game, you know, we'll see a different um, Antoine Giao come out and just start thinking about how to unsettle Palos. Palos sorry. Well, it has to be a different third set. He has to come out in a different way. He doesn't have a timeout, so he's all on his own out there from the restart. And he has to win to give him a chance in this game. Well, it's Palos will be winning his first two games of this tournament of the groups. Yeah, Palos seems quite confident. He's bouncing around with his coach and everything and just being, he looks really relaxed. And he'll be hoping, like I said, to go as far as he can in this tournament. He won it on his debut back in 2011. That was his first ever tournament, the European Championships, and he won it. So a fantastic achievement, and he'll be trying to do that again this year, 12 years on from that debut. He'd love nothing more than to reclaim that gold medal of his. And he's already back on the table, <laughs> just limbering up and getting himself ready. <laughs> he's eager to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely eager to go. Well, let's see what Zhao can do in this game. Palos to serve. And it's just a bit too quick. Fast response there from Palos, but a little bit too fast. That's brilliant from Antoine Zhao there. Played it into the middle, so he had to he forced the forehand return that he put in the net. Three two to Palos in this third set. And that was better from Palos again. Just getting himself sorted after a couple of early points dropped. Again, yeah, this one just snatching at it a little yeah. bit there. He's letting the game. He's letting the game get away from him a bit at the moment. He's got that head drop, and he needs to get refocused. That's great. Great return back in the middle. He's making it more difficult for Palos. He's trying his best. I mean, he's made a few unforced errors, but he's trying to do the right thing to win the point. Another great. Ooh, a bit of petulance there. <laughs> Just a frustration. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've been, I mean, the referee's quite entitled to give him a yellow card for that. He's just growing yeah. frustrated and yeah, it's getting just annoyed at himself now. I mean, although Palios uh, um, prefers his backhand, his forehand is very spinny. It's a great. Still think he can get back into this game, though. And he has shown flashes. Well, that was better, but I was just a bit wayward, really, from, from Palos. He was the one at fault there and, and didn't quite manage to make the cleanest of contacts with the ball.
Palos gets us back underway. Does win the point that time though. These serves proving a bit too much for Antoine at the moment. And he just clips yeah, it off the net not. and over again. And that's why he's getting really frustrated because he feels like he should be doing better from those situations. Yeah, he's just not he's just not um, getting the uh, service turns correct. And then in those instances, it's the Hungarian that's making mistakes. Both of them mm -hmm. just... I mean, he had done his good fortune there as well, which is good. I like to see that when people get in there and they acknowledge the fact that they've been lucky. Well, this is game point, match point for Balos and wins it quite comfortably. And Antoine... Zhao looking rather disappointed with himself as he is defeated in his first game of this tournament. But a rather routine win in the end for the Hungarian. Yeah, he looked very accomplished in, in his um, in his victory there. But um, Zhao showed signs of that he can actually play some decent table tennis. So hopefully, if he, I don't know how, how many group games he's got left. At, um, Just the one uh, later on today. Right, OK. Um, so he'll have to win that to stand any chance of uh, progressing of course well okay. we have got let me just double check our schedule here. 20 minutes until our next one where we'll have another class 11 game here on toy ball number six 20 minutes time
Well, welcome back to Table 6 here at the 2023 European Parrot Table Tennis Championships. Well, we've got another Class 11 game for you on the way. Players just limbering up and warming up. We have Ebru Asia versus Kalistina Lishak, Turkey versus Poland. Like I say, this is the Class 11, and we have the world number one in Ebru Asia taking part here. Up against the pole in Lishak who is currently ranked number nine in the world. Her best rank, though, was number three for the 44-year-old. But she's up against a 21-year-old that's over half her age. What are you expecting in this game? Um, well, uh, it's difficult. I've never seen these players play, but um, you can normally tell from a knock-up how they're, in terms of what they may sort of show us in the match. Um... I don't know, like I said, I've never seen these two players play. So it'll be interesting to see how it, how they sort of set up and, um, I mean, by the looks of things, they, they look as though they may attack the ball, but they, because they're warming up, it's very difficult to tell sometimes. Oh, of course. Well, looking on to our world number one, the 21-year-old from Turkey, uh, major medals include... Uh, the 29 European Championship silver in uh, the singles. Um, and she also got the bronze in the doubles at the Worlds last year. So she's got fairly good pedigree, but she's never won a major gold. And that's something that she'll be wanting to do this year. And we'll be able to take a better look at her here. Well, she did win her first game yesterday by three sets to one. But so did Christina Lishak, who won by three sets to two. So both of these were the top-ranked players coming into their group. Both of them have got 100% records. But of course, that'll be ending at the end of this game for one of them anyway. Yeah, they both look like they're going to be both attacking players. So they haven't, they've both got smooth river on both sides. So it looks as though... It looks like they're... Um, you know, I don't... I don't know um, exactly how quick they're going to be during the um, matches and stuff, but by the way they're knocking up, they look as though they, like in our previous match, they want to both attack the ball. Well, we should be getting off and underway shortly then between these two players. They're just finishing up their warm-ups. And we're later on today, we have got some more Brits on the way. But for now, all focus is on Turkey versus Poland. That's a great forehand down the line from Lishak. Straight to herself there, Lee Shack. She's taking a turn to the coach. And just forced into an error there was Lee Shack. Spooning it really high and over. And again a good there. strong backhand over and up. And you see she's a bit of a fist pumper as well, which is... Um, can sometimes be intimidating to an opponent. This has been a, an uncomfortable start for the world number one at the moment. She's not looked comfortable at all. Yeah, 5 2 the score. A fast pace this game. Neither of them really waiting around to get on with their serves. They just want to get playing, get some points on the board. And well, after that hesitant start from Asia, she's only one point off Lee Shack now, and now she's back level again. And that's a nice comeback from her from four points down to back level.
And she's he just acknowledged a good fortune there. Six all the score. And a seven six and a wild celebration from Abra. So she's what's known in the trade as a shouter. So every point she wins, she'll she'll shout quite loudly to give herself encouragement. That can presumably put off the opponent as well. Maybe it can do, but it. she's doing it after the point, so it doesn't really... <laughs> she's just letting <laughs> the opponent know that she's there. <laughs> she's not well, going she's anywhere. She's not just letting the opponent, she's letting <laughs> every other table in here know that she's there. Yeah. She's just motioning there to her coach. The movement she maybe should have done there with that shot. Eight all the score. It's a close one, this. And that was a fantastic shot <laughs> and absolutely deserving of that celebration. Yeah, yeah she, um, she likes to dance around the court when she's won a point. And she's obviously letting everybody know she's here. But I can associate with that because um, I used to do a bit of that one myself when I used to play. So, uh, Were you as loud? Um... Possibly louder. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to go into the archive footage. I'm going to have to pick a few of those clips yeah, out yeah, to have yeah. a look. But she's bouncing around now following that victory in that first set. Doesn't look yeah. that way right at the start. She was 5-1 down. But she looks absolutely delighted. And just she looks raring to go. Yeah, She, she doesn't want to be stopping here. She wants to get straight back on got, it. She's got lots of energy. And... Um, And she's just going through with the coach again. A couple of those actions that she should have potentially been doing with some of those shots. She was frustrated with the way she was doing them. And she'll be looking to rectify that in the second set. I'll be able to get great angles of her on this set. She's closest to the camera, so every time she'll... Go for that quick walk around the court. After winning a shot, well, be able to see. So both these players favour backhand serves. They don't. They don't do forehand serves at all, really. They're, I think. Oh, she's changed her forehand. Oh, she changed, but she still didn't manage to win the point. She had a slow yeah. start to the first set. Slow start to this one as well now. Yeah. Losing both of her serves. And then, Nishak losing her serve. So, yeah. I think Acer is probably the most, more attacking minded of the two. Um, There's a lot of conservative shots coming here from the, uh, the pole Nishak, isn't there? Just showing a bit of frustration there, Acer. Oh, four three to Leeshak. She serves and she just snaps up that a little bit, got over the top. Yeah. And this is the table. So two point lead for the pole. It's a quick serve and a quick response. That was, that was brilliant hit down the middle from Leeshak. So basically when people are playing to people into the body, it makes it more difficult for the opponent to actually get the ball on the table. I'd love to know what she's saying to herself. We'll have a word, I'm sure, with... Someone from the Turkish camp later on today, just to find out. Yeah. But it's Lee Shack who's six four up. So again, uh, I believe now it's actually been drawn level to six all. Right, okay. Uh, it's been 
Again, not the most comfortable of rounds for the world number one. That was great heavy spin there from Lishak. Spun it really heavy. Hence the error from Acer. Again, Lishak, I feel like she's just lacking a bit of consistency at the moment. And Aisha and he's getting those points on the board. Just clipping off the side of the table, and I think Lee Shack just motioning about that. It was very close to being in, but not quite. So 9 7. She'll go again, and that's 10 7 now. And those points getting away from the experienced pole. 44 years of age, and she does lose that second yeah. set. And she won't be best pleased with that. Yeah, Aisha she running be. back to her coach, eager. So just get on with it. I don't know, we've, we've watched a lot of players over the last she's day very and a half excitable. or so, but she's probably the most excitable I've seen. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. And you cannot fault a passion for the game. No. <laughs> uh, and I can, like I say, I can associate with that, so... Um, I didn't used to bounce around like that too much, but um, let's put it this way. A lot of people knew I was playing when I was playing <laughs> well. <laughs> I think with Lee Shack, I think she just, she's making a lot of unforced errors. She's just not getting the ball on the table, and, it, and that's frustrating her as well. So hopefully her coach will just tell her to calm down and make sure she gets back on the table. Um, Asa is obviously full of energy, and she just wants to get on with the game. Well, we check to get us back underway. And she's bouncing around on the opposite side of the table. Served down the middle. Good response from Nisha. She's just trying to go with those calmer shots. And she's not just really been as attacking, has she, Nisha? Aisha's been full yeah, gun ho from the start. Attack, attack, attack. Yeah. Feels as if. I think she's probably just she's she's just overextending on the shots a bit. So she's making, like I say, she's making a lot of unforced errors. Well, I think the coach will probably call a timeout. Yeah, a timeout has been called now. So good call, man. She did, but the thing is, she's missed three. E Why well, don't say easy shots? She just hasn't got the ball on the table. Because you're making it easy for her opponent to to win. Basically, her opponent's not doing anything to win the point. She's just making unforced errors. And obviously that's not good. So a coach is probably just asking her to calm down a bit. You know I mean, I know she's two she's two nil down, but you know, there's still you know potentially three games left to play. And she needs to give her best give herself the best chance of actually winning this game so she can actually carry on. Yeah, absolutely. I think she's already back and ready and raring yeah, to go. The coach didn't need to say much to her, to Acer at all. Yeah, just keep doing what you're doing, Absolutely. presumably. Yeah. Uh, a bit in Turkish, not English. In Turkish, Turkish, yeah. Back away with the serve. And, well, she loses the point there. Just... So that's better. She put two balls on the table, man, and Acer missed. She, you know, she's got to make Acer play another, a, another shot if she can. Motion in there, hurt. Good fortune, as you always say. Not fortunate with the net. And that was just a little bit short there from Lee Shack. Yeah, she's just she's just over hitting. She's just not putting the ball on the table. Six one down now. The score and again. She's just not managing to get enough behind it. She looks really frustrated down there. That was better. That's though. a better combination, but it's it's the, like we've been talking about all you know all yesterday and today. It's about consistency. Select from the serve, so she'll go again. Again, See, better. that was brilliant. That Much was brilliant better. there. 
And she's a, she, she just needs to do that more often. Just make sure she she gets, well, gets, you know, makes Acer a, a bit frustrated now with, with not winning points. And it's those little lapses in concentration. Yeah. And there we go, already Asia two points off winning from this third and potentially final set of this game. A good response there from Alicia. It managed to overpower Asia and forcing her to go into the net. It's a 9-4. Was really taken. And again, that's a little so combination that was a great there. response. A great response from Leash out there. Nine five the score. Well, that's so unlucky for Leash out, and the complete opposite for Asia. Noted that immediately. Just clipped the net and gave the pole no chance to respond. And that is a fantastic response, though, from Lishak. Absolutely full wellied that. But still, match point for Asia. 10 6 up. And she does win. Lishak misses the table. 11 6. Three yeah. straight sets for the world number one. I think that was the problem for Lisa in this particular game. She was just missing the ball. She she made so many unforced errors. She just made it easier for Acer to actually win that game. Um, and I don't know if she's got any more matches left after this, but a coach will probably take her back to the training hall and do a few drills just to, to give her confidence to put the ball on the table a bit more. Yeah, Lisa has got one more game. That's tomorrow right, okay. against the Czech Masarova on table seven but she has won one game so yeah. she has still got a chance of progressing Absolutely, in this yeah. tournament so, but absolutely. like you say she just needs to work on getting that ball on the table a little bit more yeah. and hopefully that'll get her confidence up but once again one more game done on table six and up next we do have the return of Martin Perry as he takes on the Finn Michaela in around 20 minutes time
Well, a big warm welcome back to Sheffield for the European Parrot Table Tennis Championships 2023. We're back with GB as Martin Perry is about to take on Oro Michaela of Finland. Martin Perry currently ranked number 11 in the world with Michaela number 55. But he's very new to the sport. He's the 19-year-old compared to the, I want to say, well, I want to say experience of 29 years of age, but I don't want to put too much disrespect on Martin. You know, he's been around for a number of years, but he's still got a lot more to give to the sport. And that was a good start to proceedings yesterday for Perry. He won by three points to zero against Simeon. As Michaela lost by three points to one against the experienced Romanian. Well, in terms of playing in this class, I've done a little bit more research today. Michaela has only ever played 29 games at Class 6. This is his 30th ever game in this class. And when you compare that to Martin Perry, who's played 325 games in Class 6, that just shows you right there the absolute difference in experience of these two players. Well, players are just getting themselves sorted and ready to come up and ready to warm up and once again delighted to be joined by three-time GB champion Farrell Anthony how are you mate and what are your expectations of this game um, I'm, I'm expecting Martin to win <laughs> um, but um, Michael is new and his ranking probably doesn't sort of belie his talent because he may, like you say, he's new, so he, he probably not played a lot of games. Um, Martin, on the other hand, has had a lot of experience. He's been playing a few years, so um, a bit like uh, Bly Toomey from Great Britain, who just came into the sport, but she's already won two games at the Europeans. Uh, Martin won't be taking this guy, um, you know, he won't be taking him lightly, so he'll be focused and professional and um, he'll be looking to capitalise on beating the number one seed in his group yesterday. Absolutely. Harry played some really, really good table tennis yesterday on day one here on table number six. And I'll be hoping to do the same today against Makeda. But like we say, we don't really know what we're expecting from the 19-year-old. He's... Ranked 55 in the world. His highest class was last year at number 42. He's not won any medals, major or minor. Well, obviously, you compare that to Perry, who's slowly but surely adding more and more medals to his name. 64 minor medals across his career. But a couple of major titles in the teams at the last couple of European Championships, 2019 and 2017. So we spoke a little bit yesterday about... Martin Perry, but we'll discuss it again today. What are his expectations for these European Championships, do you think? I think Martin will be trying to get as far as he can. Um, he'll definitely want to get out of his group, um, but he'll also, you know, he, he, he's got ambitions of playing in Paris as well. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a golden ticket up for grabs. So if, you know, if he can win it, um, then you know he's got the golden ticket to Paris, and if he does, you know if he if he wins a lot of games, he'll get more points. And so they take I, I don't know how many what the how many people are going to be taking out of Class Six, which he's in, to Paris. But um, he'll be wanting to get up higher for the ranking than possible. Is it number eleven at the moment? Uh, he'll be wanting to you know hopefully get into the top ten, maybe top five, um, as it progresses. So. Um, but we'll see, you know, Michaela, like I say, he's left-handed. We've never, I've never seen him play before. Um, but, you know, as people train, you know, sometimes people may take a long time to win their first games in, in matches and stuff. But then all of a sudden, you know, they're winning three or four matches and, and getting to quarters and semis and finals. You know, they'll be training quite hard. 
What would it mean to Perry to get to Paris, do you think? To, to be at those 2024 Paralympic Games? Yeah, absolutely. He, I think he just missed out on getting to Tokyo. Um, so he'll be wanting, you know, Paris will definitely be on his radar. Um, you know, Martin works hard, he, he trains hard and, um, you know, with his coaches and everything, but uh, hopefully. Well, we're off and underway here, and it's a yeah. fast-paced start. Yeah, he's just um, first forehand top spin, very heavy. He's very, very powerful, Martin, very powerful. A shot and a half from Perry there, yeah. taking no prisoners whatsoever. Smashing it down the centre. Giving himself a 2-0 to zero lead. And Michaela just, um, just had knowledge his good fortune there, just hit the edge of, back edge of the table. This pace rolling, Michaela just trying to put it at his own pace. This is the table there on the response. It's a good serve from Michaela. Top spin, side spin serve, heavy top spin, heavy tight side spin. Martin just misread it. So a tough start to the game for the GB player. And he's, Michaela's doing really well there. Oh, they're just yeah. there at the end. He couldn't quite get it back, but he was dealing really well with those fast paced responses from Perry. Yeah. I mean, um, Perry's got, you know, he's very consistent. Um, you know, he, he'll have worked on, on this for years in terms of making sure that he doesn't, you know, that he doesn't make unforced errors. Oh. Come away following that towel break, and it's Perry now in a 5 2 lead, three point advantage. With that diagonal serve and then a quick response back. Tries it down the middle again. It's the table. Just br brilliant um, combination of shots there from Martin Perry. Keeping the pressure on Michaela to, to he made the error. Michaela getting a point back. He seems to have decent serves, Michaela. Well, Perry didn't quite make the contact he would have wanted there with the ball. And thus has found his way to losing the point. So 6-4 on the board. And Perry to serve. And that was brilliant there. Fantastic. Set himself up for his backhand, Martin, just then. Again, but I think it's just a bit frustrated at times. But some five the score. Michaela's holding his own at the moment, and he's got some serves to come, and that's where he's looked his best. Perry was just forced a little bit away from the table there, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Well, that didn't quite help him. We've been able to get that response back by just missing the table ever so slightly. It's brilliant from Martin there. What did he move really well and stepped into his forehand to get his forehand in and play it down? Um, Michaela's backhand side. Well, one more point will do for the Brits in this opening set. 
And he gets it well there. Yeah. And set one over and done with 11 6. The score, but at times, not the most of comfortable first rounds. No, it's um, in this first game, he was a bit. Um, did Michaela held his own, but Martin, very competent performance. He'll be, he'll be happy with that start. Uh, to build up with it, and he, he's not, he doesn't look flustered or anything, so, um, just having a word with his coach there, I think Michaela probably, you know, his coach is probably saying you need to capitalise on your serves a bit more, because he, he's, he's, he's got some good spinny serves, but he seems to be, when, when he's attacking the ball, he doesn't attack it with the same sort of venom as Martin Perry does. Um, when Martin sort of serves, he looks to get in really strong to put pressure on the opponent. And I think that's what Michaela needs to do if he wants to have a chance of actually uh, winning this game. Well, both back out onto the court. Oh, sorry, actually, no, Martin is quite ready yet. Still in deep conversation with his coach. Kayla in position, ready and raring to go. <laughs> Off and away with the serve. And that was a nice one just onto the awkward side for Michaela. That's what I was just saying about Martin. When he serves, he looks to get in strong. From the serve again. Just putting it down the middle. Across the other side and then. There's a good response from Michaela, that. Forced yeah. Perry into that mistake. Again, yeah, he's got to try and do more of that. But again, Martin, very, very good with the backhand as well. Um, Martin Perry plays with um, pimples on his backhand side to give him a bit more control. And just acknowledging his good fortune there. 3-1 well, the score to Perry. Gears up for the serve. Yeah, Martin will be happy with that. He's actually making winners. More points in front now, and Michaela gets herself back into it on that six point mark. Yeah, so the players are allowed to towel down every six points, and most players will take that opportunity, even if it's just to uh, gather their thoughts. Michaela with the serve, and a fantastic response from Perry that. Better than from Michaela that time round. That's what I was talking about, about putting pressure on Martin's shot. He played a really good backhand down to the Martin's backhand side then. It's a good serve from Martin Perry there. Just tying the um, Michaela up. Down the middle, and then a good response. Perry, 7 3 in front. Underway with Perry down the middle. It's a nice little rally, this that's going between them. A response from Michaela, but then into the net from Perry. 
You'd be disappointed with that. Let's just allow Michaela back into this game at 8 4. So both of them just taking that towel break. Perry will need to refocus his mind now following that mistake a few moments ago and he, he hasn't quite he seems unsettled yeah it's so just missed it's just a couple of um, shots that he's missed and he probably showing a bit of frustration that's all that was better I'm a bit more like it licking it back across the table He struggled with that serve. It's a decent serve. But it, it's um, got him quite a few points. Well, one, two. That's set point now then for Perry. On the first set, 11-6. And he has the chance to do that again here. And he does. With a plum. And I would say varying degrees of success at times. In that set, he looked really comfortable. But then on others, Michaela's serve was really catching him out. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's a tricky one for um, Martin because he he knows he, he he should be winning this game. And it's sometimes, you know, a player can get frustrated when things aren't going well. But he sorted it out at the end of the game. And he's showing more consistency than, more consistency than Ace, uh, Michaela. Um, and um, Martin's coach will just be telling him to do more of the same. Well, both coaches in deep dialogue with their players. So we approach this third set here on day two. Game five of the European Paratable Tennis Championships, Sheffield. So Perry returns to the table. As we're ready to get back and underway. Yeah. This heavy, heavy top spin from Martin Perry and Michaela just put it off the end. And then here's the fin to get us away again with the serve and he cheers that one. Really pleased with his response to Perry going one up. That was a fantastic reply from the Finn, and he just win the point as well. Yeah, it was a good return from. It was a good open and up shot from Martin Perry, but Mikhail just. Um, blocked it back and Martin was just a bit slow in the response, that's all. That's a little bit of misfortune there as it clips off the net. It goes off the table. And again, that time round, Perry went for one of those open-up shots. Yeah. This time, wins the point. Just picking up the ante a little bit here. Yeah, he's just played two pace. winners there. He'll probably call a timeout now, the coach. Well, that was off, yeah. Potentially if Martin gets another point in his favour before Michaela can reply. And I can definitely see it, that happening. Players now ready and set again. Michaela does lose that point, and timeout has been called by the Finland coach. He did call it correctly. 
Almost yeah, he just, um, he's gonna, let, you know, can't let him get too far away from him before he does that. And I think um, if uh, if he wants any chance of winning this particular game, he has to turn things around a bit. Oh, it's been a fairly solid start to proceedings for the Brits at these championships. And up next on this court, we have Billy Shilton in action. I know you've been looking forward to that one. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, Billy playing well and hopefully, you know, the great, a lot of the Great Britain players are doing well as well. So um, hopefully Marty can um, close this game out. But um, Michaela may come back with um, a few problems for him to answer. But again, he's strong top spin, side spin serve. And Michaela didn't handle that at all. Six two down, Michaela to serve. Yeah, that was a nice shot down the middle. Yeah, well, yeah it did. It played the it played the serve so that Martin didn't get his forehand in, and then he got the return. and And he's done this a couple of times where he's really pushed through the ball with his backhand and won the point. Thing is, he's not done enough of it to trouble um, Martin at all. And then again, he make you know Martin got in with a strong forehand, and Michaela made the error, and that's been the story of the game, really. The Brett serves again. He just missed another serve, and it makes it really difficult to try and get win a game when you're missing serves all the time. Can he do any better on this time? And has returned it and returned it well enough to force Perry into the net and get himself a point back. So we're eight four up in this singles class six. Fixture in Group 4. Perry Queen put under a little bit of pressure now by Michaela. It won't be a position he'll be comfortable or happy with at the moment. We can change that with some good shots that have to fall his way. 9-5 the score. Once again to defend. You just can't. And that's it. Quite that's a winning it. shot, a winning backhand from Martin. A very competent performance from the the British player. Uh, it puts him in really good stead for the remainder of this week. He will go through the groups now following a uh, success. He's won both games in this group and won all three sets in that match, 11-6 as well so consistency as well from him here we hopefully he can keep on improving in this tournament and as for Michaela it is slightly disappointing to come into the tournament and lose two games but he'll use it as a learning curve won't he I think so he's, like I said he's young you know he's not 19 and you know if he wants a long uh, longevity in the sport he's, he's going to have to just train really hard um, to get better so he you know over the next year or so when he comes back uh, or plays the Europeans in a couple of years hopefully he'll have made some um, headway into making large improvements in his game well I'll we'll be in action once again in around 10 minutes time Billy Shilton taking on the Romanian Borrelino in 10 minutes time
make some noise. Welcome the players for the 12.455 round of matches. Our table one and men singles, last four. Andre Della from France. Tommy Stavros from Croatia. Our umpire is Thomas Marcel from England. On table two, men's singles class four, Peter Mihalik from Slovakia and Petru Defrosa from Romania. The umpire is Linda Reed from England. On table three, men's singles class four, Rafael Bliss from Poland and Everett Martin from France. The umpire is Peter Higgins from Wales. On table four, Boris Travnicek from Slovakia and Henrik Anderson from Austria. The umpire is David Edwards from England. On table five, men's singles class four, Francisco Javier Lopez Sego from Spain and George Emilio Forestu from Romania. The umpire is Lester Smith from England. On table six, Billy Shilton from Great Britain and Robert Mario Morigliano from Romania. The umpire is Johan Deplomesno from France. On table seven, men's singles class eight, Richard Jetsti from Slovakia, Alan Lulia Nikolai from Romania. The umpire is Sheila Walsh from England. On table eight, men's singles class eight, Zee Wickman from Israel, Marcin Zielewski from Poland. The umpire is Lyndon Griffiths from England. On table nine, men's singles class eight, Borna Zohil from Croatia, Stefan Salmonson from North. Well, welcome back then to our final game before the afternoon break. And once again, we have a GB athlete in action. It's Billy Shilton, the 24-year-old, who's taking on the Romanian 25-year-old Robert Marlian Borlilinu. Well, Billy is currently the world's double champion with Paul Karabakh, so definitely Karabakh. Karabakh, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> with Paul Karabardak. Is that that's better? The, that's there, the one. That's there, the one. there we go. There we go. Point is, Billy is currently a champion of the world. So he's in a really good position for this tournament. He played extremely well yesterday and we're surely expecting the same today. He, he, he's playing well, Billy. You know, I think he, the benchmark is his backhand at the moment that he seems to be so competent with it. He's worked hard on it all year and it, it seems to be coming together. So he'll be wanting to capitalise on that and, and finish the group in a strong way. Uh, he's up against someone that he has played with previously, just the once, uh, but both of these came up against each other. And that was back in 2019 at the Parapolish Open in the singles. Billy Shilton did come out on top. It's just interesting to note that both of these have come up against each other. So, they would have had a look back on that footage from four years ago to see if they can pick up on anything that either of them will be doing in this game, either whether it's with their serves or with certain stars on the backhand that they'll be using. Yeah, there's, um, the thing is, obviously, four years ago, four years is a long time, mm -hmm. um, and they both have been training, so they'll be both better players. Um, you know, Billy now is a you know a competent um, top ten uh, player, and you know his opponent is probably not on the same um, level as Billy in terms of rankings. But um, I'm sure four years ago he wasn't playing like this. <laughs> no, definitely not. Well, Burlani, seventy difference in terms of the world rankings. He's number eighty. Billy Shelton, number ten. But Rolano will not roll over easily. He will have to really put the effort in. Will 
Bailey Shilton to come out on top here. Have a look at the results from yesterday and today. Well, Borealu has lost both of his games, but he's lost them by three sets to one. So he's shown that he's still got a little bit of fight, still a little bit of hunger. Uh, Billy, and this is second game, sorry, third game of uh, the week already. He's won both of them by three straight sets. So he'll be hoping to do exactly the same today. And, you know, I've seen him yesterday up on the balcony area where we're situated. Just a massive smile on his face. And he's really enjoying himself at the minute, isn't he? Oh uh, yes, I think he, you know he's enjoying the way he's playing, and you know that that's all you can ask for as a player. You want to try and play your best at the the major championships, and he he seems to be playing. I'm sure he's probably thinking he can play a bit better, but at the moment he's happy with his form, and that's always a good place to start. Oh, we're about to get off and underway. That now will be Shilton to start for us from the serve. Just got under it a bit too much there, did the Romanian. Scooping it high and off the table. And first point to Shilton. And there's what we call a kicker serve there from Billy Shilton. Lots of topspin that kicks up and that's why the um, Borolino missed the shot. But then he came back with two very strong forehands into backhands, uh, into Billy Shilton's backhand. It's a careful, precise shot there from Shilton. Just. Yeah, some Carefully great feeling from Billy over. Shilton then, just to get the guy the ball back onto the table. And again, this really quick movement actually from Shilton from left to right on the table, shuffling himself across. That's a great serve. Does that just just like a half long serve that caught out Borolino? So it looked as though he could get the ball, but it just dropped off the table on the second bounce. Five, one, the score. So a quick towel break, as you can always do after six points. And that's a brilliant backhand flick from Billy Shilton. Just giving himself a word of encouragement, saying he liked that shot as well. in the table there just snatched at it a little bit very narrow miss albeit yeah again there's that kicker serve it just kicks up and it just ca catches Borolino out these serves are paying dividends at the moment 6-2 the score And Borolino just can go for it a little bit too much, isn't he, from these shots from Billy. He's not quite been able to deal with it maybe the way he wanted it to. That was better, but it just set it up so easily. Yeah, so Billy went to the backhand there with um, side spin and top spin, and the ball popped up, and he just put it away. And there again, just heavy top spin from Billy Shilton. Just half a bowling you know, to cope with that at the moment. And a little bit of good fortune there, which... Well, that's... Well, I don't know what that shot was. It's just a, a, like a strawberry shot, I think. He just came round the back of the ball with his back on from the forehand side. But he did, he did get a bit of fortune, but the fact that he did play that shot shows the confidence of Shilton at the moment. All right, and he just pointed out to the referee that that touched the edge of the table. 10-3. The score at the moment for Billy. So this is set point. And he does get that set with relative ease. And I think he'll be 
pleased with that first set performance and Borrelino's just got a lot of work to do here with I was about to say his coach but he's actually got one down there at the moment so he is all on his own yeah uh, Billy Chilton just taken to his coach Dave Macbeth there um, it won't be saying much to him just to carry on doing the same the thing is here this is not an ideal situation for Robert Borrellino that's from what I can see there is his coach is actually coaching two games at the same time across two courts. So it means he's not really been able to watch exactly what he's doing. But he is yeah, it's tough though. Sometimes if, the, if they've only got a small coaching staff to be able to have all the coaches on at the same time, it's sometimes it's just difficult the way the scheduling goes. So rally down the middle, fantastic shot there. It's a great backhand. From the Romanian. So he's obviously got that in his locker. Um, it's just about, like we've been talking about consistency, being able to do that consistently. Nice flick there from Billy Shilton into the backhand side of Borolino. Fortunate, got lucky, and then just caught Borellini off guard. That was a bit of an odd point, that one. It was. He caught um, Billy. He didn't know where the ball was going, and he, he just nice touch over the net. Through on the score to Shilton, and then again, Borellini's going into those first set mistakes that he was making. Yeah. They just missed that. He went uh, far too big on that backhand, Billy Shilton, just then. Um, but it just shows that he's he's just confident in all the shots that he's playing right now. Again, it's there those strong that serves that are just causing those mistakes, really, from... Borrelino. Yeah, he's making it's just making it difficult for Borolino to get any purchase on his serves and then he's just coming in and finishing the point. So we go again with his next serve. Fantastic response again. He's so powerful with those shots. Yeah, that was a great shot from Borolino, but the the return shot from Shilton was just as good. Seven to the score in favour of the Brit. We know he's not quite a hundred percent yet either. Still got more to give if he needs to. If he sets up to take the serve. Here we go again. That was a nice return from Burrellino a couple of times as well there. He deserves that point. Some really nice Ooh, returns. Yeah, it was a bit off balance when he played that backhand then, Shilton. And that's a great combination from Billy Shilton. Just spraying the roll around the table and then finishing it off with a forehand on the uh, diagonal. Ninety-three, the score. Norlino up to serve as he tries to find a way back into this game that's the ball there on the serve and will count as a point for Shilton go again and then finishes it that was a with fantastic ease flick. there from Shilton yeah. he's, that's the good. he is full of confidence at the moment and um you know, it's just testament to the training that he does, that he can do all those kind of things. I think um, 
Borolino was, you know, he's obviously um, struggling a bit with everything that Billy Shilton's throwing at him, but um, it's uh, it looks like one-way traffic at the moment. Absolutely. Oh, that one-way traffic continue into this third set. 11 and 3 in the first two in favour of the Brits. Borrellino playing at the moment. This will be his final game of these championships. He played two previously in this four man group. They missed the, uh, quite a fairly easy forehand shot then, Billy. I mean, it's just, um, he just struggled with uh, Billy Shilton's serves all through the match. It's been really difficult for him. Again, oh, three you know now, just hit the net on the way over, just deflected it wide of the table. Orlino will be gaining confidence from this. But again, he, he, you know, that return shot, it just, he gets one, loses one. It's, it's the consistency thing again. I've said this a number of times this weekend. I don't know what's going off there. I just don't want to look down onto the table, but I'm assuming they're all okay now. Fantastic response there. Going to go over the top of the ball. Yeah. And not really giving really new a prayer of being able to send that back. Chance to level it up now. And he does. Back up to 3-3. Three, three. Like you were saying, consistency, isn't it, for the Romanian. We've said this a lot about a lot of our younger competitors across the last couple of days where they're playing in their first European Championships. They've shown flashes of why they are here, but it's about getting that consistency every single game, keeping it up against the best players. Yeah. See, the heavy spin from Billy Shilton then, he just sets himself up nicely. Well, there's actually been a correction to the scoreboard, which is when well, we had that slight delay a moment ago. The score now reads, just wait for it to change, 5-3 to Shilton. I think had a bit of a question mark over one of the points. And all back now, and Shilton again snatched at that a little bit, is he? Yeah. Piled again, it into again, the Borolino showed net. that he can actually attack a ball really well. Just missing the table there yeah. again, Shilton. He's so not he, having the best of sets, is he? No, he just went a bit too big again on that backhand, that's all. Well, Borolino now in the lead. 6-5. So it's good. It's a good place for him to be. Said he had lost his two previous fixtures so far, but did win a set in both. If we're trying to do that again here, that was a nice return from Borellino, which put Shilton in an uncomfortable position as he hit the net. Yeah, so Borellino's he's actually, you know, he's actually in this game and it's it's really good, you know, it, it, you know, it's good for him to know that he can compete at this level. Absolutely. Again, Shilton there. That was a great return from Brock. Just a bit short for Billy Shilton to get it. And he's he's actually in the lead now, which is really good for him. 8-5, yeah, the score. And Shilton's under a bit of pressure here. This will be the first time this has happened to him, this tournament. And, well, I don't know whether yeah. he may need a timeout or just to calm the pressure no or he's just going to ride this out and yeah he'll just ride this out now he won't take a time out he'll um i think he just he just lost a bit of concentration and focus that's all 
and um, you know I think you know he'll probably just try and do his best to try and win this game still I mean he's, you know it's the first to 11 it's not the first to 9 so um, you know he's still Billy will still fight for every point 6-9 in favour of Borolinu he takes up the serve and it's a nice and response there from yeah. Shilton and he's getting that confidence back and getting that mojo back and now the the, the, the Romania's taking a time out well, there we go does he but, but, coach feel like he's just under a little bit of pressure there and of course this is such an important set for Borolino if he loses he loses he's obviously the, lost, he loses lost the, the game yeah yeah he loses the match yeah so it's a good time out for the Romanian um, you know, it was 9-5 up, but, um, you know, like I said, sometimes in a game you can just drift a bit and lose a bit of focus, and so it's probably a, the timeouts as good for Billy Shilton as it is for the Romanian. Once again, they are just deep in conversation. Oh. Ready, back again to go. Shilton, so, seven, Borolinu, nine. So the two important serves in this game for Billy Shilton. And he does win the first point from that serve. More of that and he will be level. He isn't now, that's a very good return from Borolinu. Celebrates, he's happy. Yeah. One more point, and he will have won this next set. And based on the completion of the first couple of sets, I really think we were expecting this. No, it's definitely something that Billy Shilton wouldn't have been expecting. So, and he yeah, does. He manages yeah. to keep himself alive. Yeah, a good combination, a good forehand flick, and a good forehand um, drive as well to finish off. Can he force it to 12s? Yes, he can. Yep. Morellino just missing the table. So we're at 10 10. So we've just got a stoppage at the moment. Shoelace needing to be tied. Chilton just. Taking a long walk around that court. Mm. Get himself prepared. As he gets ready to serve. He wins that first point. Hasn't returned. Right, Borrellino. Now with the remaining to serve. Shilton is on match point. Good serve from Borolino. Oh, the Brit to serve now. Gets it over. And big celebration there from the Romanian. Frustration from the Brit. He trails 12 11. Yeah, I don't think he, believe, he could believe they actually missed the table. Yeah, it's a good return. Probably. Back to level again. 12 apiece. It wouldn't surprise me if Billy Shilton put a kicker in now. In this serve. Uh, oh, the table again. A big shake of the head from the 24 year old. Trails once again, 13-12. And it is the Romanian serve. But he's a brilliant response just to the edge of the table and yeah, gets himself game. back level again. It's the, the backhand again. He's, he actually is playing well with the backhand. It's, um, I mean, sometimes he misses, but generally he gets a lot of those shots on. Nice rally this from them and a fantastic response yeah. from Borrellino. 
He's grown in confidence at the game. Look at him, he's jumping around, he's bouncing up and down. He's feeling really good about himself right now. Absolutely, he should. After that shot, he's back in the lead. One point away once again. And he misses the ball. Yeah. Maybe a bit too much confidence there for him. Well, it's always difficult to close a game out sometimes. Well, 14 all. This is uncharted territory for this table over the last couple of days. A great shot there from Shilton. Brilliant backhand again. Lots of power. Yeah. Set himself up nicely with the serve, though. And now with Borolinu to serve it. Shilton, who's in the best position. You know, again, but then and we again, level again, Borino, and it's it's really, he's really, it's quite confident. You know, he played three decent shots there for Billy um, Shilton to make the error. Fifteen all. Neither of these two can be separated right now. Some great shots from both of these players. Fantastically done from Borolinu. Runs off celebrating. He's delighted with that. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a great rally, and. Um, like I say, he's, he's, he's quite confident in what he's doing right now. Now, 16-15 to the Romanian. Shilton with a quick response. Says, can he do it? But no. Borolinu celebrates yeah. as he gets the two-point advantage. And pressure on now for the Brits in Billy Shilton. Yeah, he won't be happy with that at all. Um, but... To be fair to Borolino, he actually played well at the end of that game. Well, I think the fear must be then for Shilton, if that carries on through, he needs to refocus, of course, and think about what he's got to do now in the next set, because he can't let that happen again, of course. But Borolino, on the other hand, skyrocketing in confidence, really starting to get into the groove of the game and starting to respond better to those shots that Shilton was sending yeah, his way. he coped well under pressure at the end of that, Borolino. He, you know, he stayed in the game. Uh, could, uh, Billy had advantage a few times before he actually got the advantage and won. But um, like I say, like you said before, uh, Billy just needs to refocus now. Well, into the fourth set of this game then. Shilton leads by two sets to one. It's a great touch from Billy Shilton there. Oh, that level again. Shilton with the serve. Nice responses from Borolini. Yep. Not good enough right there yeah. though. I think that's what Billy Shilton needs to do now. Just make sure he gets a, a strong ball on the table. He doesn't have to go too hard. Like that. Very competent shot, very compact backhand. Taking it early. Less room for error when you do that. When you take the ball early, there's less room for error. That was a really nice serve from Borolinu, went down the near side line and that caught Billy off guard a bit. Just a bit, but like I say, Borolino is grown in confidence. He's happy to try those kind of styles. Yeah. But he can't, the thing is, if he's going to play long serves, he's going to be in trouble, um, especially to Billy Shilton's backhand, because his backhand is very strong. I know he's missed a few, but he'll, if the opportunity is there, we'll always go for the ball. Always. Off he steps. Once again with the serve. Trying to find that pocket of space and a big celebration there from him. He's happy with that one. Oh, 
Hunter men and it goes from Burellino. Of course he has used his timeout, so he is effectively on his own out there for now. Quick rally there, once again from the two. This is Borellino to serve as he has to try and find a way back into this match, and he does. Pulls his way back in, 7 and 3. And the young 19 year old Romanian fighting for every point in this match. Flex off the top of the net and away from the table. Just put a bit a bit, bit more pressure on Billy's backhand with that kind of shot. It's really going fast into Billy's backhand. Again, Shilton missing the table. Oh, only two points separate them now. And well, we're in this situation in the last set. And that's when Borellino just started to slowly grow in confidence when those mistakes were slipping in yeah. from Shilton. That's when the Romanian started enjoying his table tennis a bit more and started to get those points on the board. Only two points separate them now. Borellino just missing the ball there. You can see how much that point meant to Billy Shilton then. A um, bit of a fuss bump and a shout as well. That was clever from Billy Shilton. Then he, he'd, he'd been going cross court and he went down the line instead. So Borolino was expecting it cross court, but he went down the line and it caught himself, caught out, caught him. Shilton to deliver it. And he misses the ball this time. 9 6 now, the score. A bit of pressure being added to both of these players' games. Over. Yeah, so Billy, what Billy off. did to them, he played backhand serve with side spin and top spin to win the point. Really, you know, to serve on this game point for Shilton. He did well, wins the put 10 7. It back. That's a nice response from Borellino. Got a bit fortunate, admittedly. He got, yeah, he did get a bit fortunate. But, you know, he's, like I said, towards the end of last game, he grew in confidence. And, um, oh, and Billy's called himself a timeout. Okay, well, talk us through that because he only needs yeah. the one point, but Borellino's just won the last couple. Is that why? Yeah, absolutely. He does, a, you know, he's got momentum, he got an edge, he's probably feeling a bit agitated. So we called him, he called, I mean, the player or the coach can call the timeout, but I think in this case, Billy just put his back down and got back to the coach and said, um, you know, I just need a break. So both of them having those conversations with the coaches. Of course, Shilton only needs one point to wrap up this set and, of course, wrap up the entire game. Borellino, what we've said, he's really coming to his own in the latter end of these sets. And yeah, the last two games, he's come to, you know, th this is where he sort of seems to play his best table tennis. We'll see, Shilton to serve. And Shilton to potentially win it with this serve. So no pressure, Billy. And there we go. There you go. And that is how effective the timeout can be. Just gave him a minute to reset and Shilton wins by 11 points to eight and three sets to one but it was a hard fought victory that yeah I think in you know Borolino came into his own um, in the last couple of games but um, I think sometimes it, it just a player can lose concentration just for a moment and that's when the other opponent can pounce so He'll be happy that he's, you know, he's got over the line and, you know, he's won the group now as well. So, um, you know, going into the next stage, um, he'll be confident that, um, you know, whoever he's playing, he's playing well. 
and that bodes well for the rest of the tournament. Absolutely. It sets him up very nicely for the rest of the week with three successive victories in the groups. So, well, we'll be back at 3.45 for the next game here on Table 6. We're off to, well, find some food and have, I reckon, a well-deserved lunch break. So we hope to have you with us later on this afternoon.